Data is incredibly valuable. Some call it the new oil. Data is what powers most of the big tech companies and AI models like ChatGPT. Without data, they are nothing. Data isn't scarce like oil. There is plenty of it. The problem with data is that it is not organized. It's scattered all across the web. Data is valuable, but organized data, it's even more valuable. With organized data, you can do academic research, business intelligence, market research, content aggregation, and more. You can even build whole businesses by just organizing data. Price comparison websites extract data from other websites and provide value to people by showing them different prices. Job boards aggregate job postings from various websites. And stock market dashboards get news about companies, tweets about the stock, price movements, and more, all from different websites and display them all on the same place. Before we can organize data, we have to collect data. One way of collecting data is by using the official APIs that some websites provide. But most of the time, those APIs are either paid or non-existent. This is when web scraping comes in. Web scraping is a method of data collection where we extract data from websites that do not provide an API or a direct way to access the data. If you are a data scientist, marketer, developer, or researcher, web scraping is a tool that you will eventually need to use to extract the data you want. But of course, the companies that have the data we want know their data is valuable and they always make it harder and harder to scrape their websites with things like captchas and bot detection software. The good news for us is that thanks to scraping browser, we can scrape websites without the fear of getting blocked. And that is what I want to show you today. Let's pretend you're going on a trip and you want to find what is the cheapest day of the week to fly on. If we wanted to do this manually, we will have to go to a sky scanner, for example, and manually click on each day of the week to see which one has the lowest price. That looks like a process we should be able to automate using web scraping. To scrape a website like Skyscanner, we would need to automate our browser. And to automate our browser, we have many options. We can use Selenium, Playwright, or Puppeteer. The good news is that scraping browser works with all of them so you can use whatever you want. The Puppeteer code that does what we want looks something like this. Here we are launching Puppeteer, which will launch an automated browser. Then we are opening a new tab. We have a list of dates we want to check. October 20, 21, 22, and 23. Then, for every date in our list, we are opening the Sky Scanner website, going from Seoul to Barcelona, plus the date we are checking. We are waiting for four seconds, and then just for this example, we are saving a screenshot of the page that has the prices we want to check. In reality, you would not take a screenshot and put this data on an Excel. If I try to run this code from my laptop, the browser will open, but Sky Scanner will detect that I am using an automated browser, so it will block the request and not show me the page I I want. Enter Scraping Browser. Scraping Browser is a product by Bright Data, the sponsors of this video. Scraping Browser is a browser that makes you practically undetectable when scraping websites. And if you get blocked, Scraping Browser will solve the CAPTCHA automatically for you. It has CAPTCHA solving automation built in. The reason why Scraping Browser is not easy to detect by other websites is because it is not a headless browser. When you launch a Scraping Browser, you are launching a real headful browser on Bright data's servers that looks identical to the one a real user would use. The scraping browser also has a built-in proxy monitoring and proxy rotation, which means that every time you launch the browser, you will get a different IP from a different country, making your scraping even harder to detect. Bright Data has over 72 million IPs on their network, which is super useful if, for example, you are testing your website and want to see how it looks like in different languages or countries. Using scraping browser is super simple. All we have to do is change a couple of lines of code and we're good to go. After you create an account on Bright Data's website and you create a scraping browser, you are going to receive three things, post, username, and a password. This information is all we need to start scraping using the scraping browser. In our puppeteer code, we will need to replace this line with this line of code, where the username, password, and host variables are what we got from our Bright Data dashboard. And that is it. On Bright Data's website, you can see how you can connect if you are using Selenium and puppeteer, or if you're using Python or C Sharp. With Scraping Browser, if we run our code, we're not going to see anything in our screen, since the browser is not being launched in our computer, but on Bright Data's servers. To see how the Scraping Browser is doing, after we run our code, we can go to the Scraping Browser dashboard where we got our credentials from, and there we can click on 
on the button that says Chrome DevTools Debugger. That will give us a link to the instance of scraping browser that we're currently running. And after we click it, we will be taken to a screen where we can see the developer tools and a live view of the browser. As you can see, it works like a charm. We go to each page we want to without getting blocked. Because some ticket websites change prices depending on the country, to launch a browser from another country, we could change the connection string a little bit. This connection string will give us a browser on a random country. This one will launch a browser specifically from Korea. This one specifically from Australia. All we have to do is write dash country dash plus a two letter country code after the username and we will get a browser launched from that place. By writing dash country dash EU, you will get a browser from any country inside of the Europe. European Union. Scraping browser isn't free. We have to pay for the bandwidth we consume. For this reason, it is good to only fetch what we need and not download any unnecessary images or assets since we're going to have to pay for it all. We can block URLs so our scraping browser does not fetch them using code like this. Here we are telling Puppeteer to not fetch URLs from doubleclick.net or facebook.com. This way, when we go to a page, any Google or Facebook ad pixel is not going to load, saving us bandwidth. With the data we've collected from Sky Scanner, we could build a travel app that will display the cheapest places to travel. We can create a price monitoring tool that will alert us when the prices are low, or we can analyze the data to find the best seasons to travel on. That's it for this video. I hope you found it useful and I hope you take Scraping Browser for a ride. Keep in mind that Scraping Browser can only be used to scrape publicly accessible data. That means data that is not hidden behind a login. Something to keep in mind. To check out Scraping Browser, click the link below. Thanks to Bright Data for sponsoring this video and thank you for watching as always. Onjana kamsahago, sarangamida, see you on the next one. Daome bye bye.